Welcome to the final segment of our four-part series on developing a custom engagement ring in SOLIDWORKS. We're going to finish up this design by creating a series of mirrors of the prongs and patterning this accent stone along the shank. So let's start by mirroring the prong across the front plane. This prong is a separate body for now. We're going to create another mirror across the right plane those two prongs. So now we have all four prongs. So the reason I've left these four prongs and the cutter as a separate body is now I can use those to create a circular pattern along the shank. So we'll have three accent stones on each side of the main stone. So let's come up here to linear pattern, I'll drop down and go to circular pattern. We're going to do a circular pattern along around the origin so we can just select a circular edge. We'll select that edge and the bodies that we want to create a pattern. This cutter, our four prongs. You can actually use the tree here to select your bodies as well. And we want to pattern the little accent stone as well. So this time we're not going to do a full rotational pattern. We're just going to do 15 degree increments. We're going to do three stones. And it looks like we're going the wrong direction there. So if you come over here and hit reverse direction, that looks good. Now we're going to do two combine operations. So let's go to the combine tool. We're actually going to subtract those cutters from the main body, which is the shank. So select your main body, then select your cutters. Now let's combine all the bodies except for the stones. And I'm going to do that by selecting all the bodies in the history tree here. using the combine tool again. This time we're using the add operation. Now if you recall in part three of this series we rotated the bodies 30 degrees. So I want to rotate them back. So let's go to move copy bodies. I'm going to select all of them. We're going to rotate around the origin and we're going to go back negative 30 degrees. Again ensure copy isn't selected. Now let's clean this up with some fillets. Let's fillet the interaction between the setting and the shank, 0.25 millimeters. And we want this ring to be comfortable, so let's put a 0.4 millimeter fillet on the inside of this ring. Now let's create the bottom of our shank using the boundary tool. And I'm going to use my original shank sketch as a reference. Let's sketch on the right plane. And we want the bottom of this shank to blend into round so it's nice and comfortable. We'll make sure it pierces the ID of our ring there because I'm going to use that ID as a guide curve. Now let's create our guide curves here. I'm going to sketch on the front plane. And we're going to use the Convert Entities tool to convert our original sketch over to this sketch. And we'll create some trim lines here. And with the Trim Entities tool, with the Trim to Closest option select selected, let's just trim away the parts of the sketch we don't want. hide our sketch. Now let's go into the boundary tool. The nice thing about boundary is you're not required like a loft to have guide curves but in this case I want to make sure the ID of my ring is nice and perfectly round so I'm gonna keep some guide curves in there. Let's select our face and we'll select our round sketch and then we'll use these guide curves as we sketched them. Now we want this interaction here to be nice and smooth, so I'm going to select this face and use a curvature to face option. And the same thing down here, when I mirror this, I want to make sure that all blends in nicely. So I'm going to set that tangency influence to 100. Here at this bottom sketch, I'm going to set it normal to profile. And that's a nice smooth interaction there. Let's go ahead and mirror everything. I'm going to select everything over here in my history tree. 
go to the mirror function and we're going to mirror it on the right plane. Hit OK. Now let's go ahead and combine my shank components. Add them together. And lastly, let's just reapply our materials here. So let's reapply my metal to the shank. And we'll apply a gemstone color here to the accent stones. Let's use sapphire. And to apply that material across all of the accent stones, come over here into your display manager double click on the sapphire appearance and you can select the bodies that you want to apply that material to. And OK. There you go, that's the completion of our series. You can now take this CAD to your local jeweler. You can potentially print it, mill it for you. You have yourself a custom engagement ring. Thanks for watching.